Welcome to the Smith and Nephew Digital Education Module on the Principles of Skincare, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care further. Today we will be discussing the principles of skincare. By the end of the module, you will be able to name the basic layers of the skin. You'll be able to recall the importance of the acid mantle in maintaining healthy skincare and recognise the general skincare principles. The skin is huge. It contributes to around 16% of our entire body weight. I don't know about you, but I found that really surprising. With a weight of approximately three to five kilograms, which is twice as much as our brain, and with a thickness of 0.5 millimetres to four millimetres, which is obviously varied on age and area. So the skin on our elbow might be a lot thinner than the skin on our legs. It manages to cover and protect our entire body. So it's our responsibility to take care of our skin as much as our skin takes care of us. To do this, we need to understand the structure. Now the skin is a complex organ with a complex structure, and that's to allow for the array of functions it carries out. To simplify it, it's comprised of two main layers, the epidermis and the dermis. We also get the subcutaneous layer, which is found below the dermis. If you think back to science lessons at school, we had the pH scale, and that showed how acidic or alkaline something was. Now our skin has a pH of around four to 6.5. That can vary on age, but essentially what this is telling you is that the skin is alkalinic due to a combination of excretions of oil and sweat, as well as excretions from our normal skin microbiota. We refer to this as the acid mantle. The acid mantle allows the body to defend itself against invading microorganisms. So you can just imagine how important it is. The acid mantle, if it is disturbed, and the pH is altered, and this can happen due to excess excretions sitting on the skin, or even simple like our body wash just sitting on the skin. Those defences are compromised, and therefore, so is the skin. Thinking about the pH levels we just discussed, our acid mantle can be changed by the soaps we use and the body lotions. It's so important, and especially for people with vulnerable skin, that we use a mild soap. Try and make sure that the soap or body lotion has a pH between 4 and 5 to avoid disrupting the acid mantle. We want to make sure we have nothing sitting on the skin and that's kept clean. So skin cleansing is absolutely imperative and making sure they are well washed. It's not only good for the skin, but it's also good mentally to feel clean. We all know this. So some might want to wash once a day some twice, it's all about preference, but please make sure they are well dried and no products are sitting on the skin. That could be more harmful than good. Don't forget to, to use whatever products, creams, lotions, etc. of the individual preference. Even if we don't like the products they're using, it's their skin and their choice. We can simply advise and try to educate. When it comes to the face, just use some lukewarm water and use an emollient where needed. We don't need soap on the face. That will only dry it out. Don't forget skin cleansing, skin protection and skin restoration is what we're doing here. The best practice would recommend a soap substitute because as I previously said, it can disrupt the skin's mantle but again, remember, it's patient choice. We can simply advise and educate. Now, I'm here telling you what to do, but I'm not actually telling you why to do it. Skin cleansing keeps the skin healthy by removing any damaging substances from the skin that can affect the acid mantle, such as dirt, soil, and even unhealthy bacteria that is already sitting on our skin. Surfactants tend to be the main cleansing ingredient in washing products. They can alter, however, 
and they are known skin irritants. The type that's included in the product can range in mildness, but it's so important that you rinse them off and don't leave them sitting on the skin. This can lead to a weakening of the skin's barrier function, as it can remove the acid mantle that we've already discussed. That is protecting against infection. That is going to weaken the skin and make it vulnerable. So rinsing and drying the skin. Skin cleansing, as we've said, needs to be guided by the patient's personal preference. What we need to do, however, is make sure that when they are washed, that they're well dried. It's so important. Without sufficient drying, there's overhydration and maceration. And when you do, make sure you pat the area rather than rub and a towel is advised. This is the kindest for the skin and the least likely to cause any damage. There are so many skin protectants out there. We can't tell you what to use, but we can tell you what to look out for. Make sure it's easy to apply, remove and use. What this is going to do is this is going to stop you irritating the skin or even damaging it when you're trying to rub it off. It will avoid bodily fluids such as faeces and urine sitting in the skin, which will in turn protect the skin and maintain its integrity. This will help to prevent from moisture lesions and AIDs, which can not only be unsightly, but also very painful for the patient. You want to be able to monitor it. So usually we'd want it to be sheer so we can see what's happening below. We also want to be using it daily. Make sure it adheres to both dry and wet skin. The likelihood is your patient will experience both. So we want to make sure the protectant stays in place and does what it needs to do. And of course, make sure it's safe and effective. So what can happen with poor skin care? These are just two examples. Poor incontinent care can often help contribute to hard to heal pressure ulcers. These can not only have a huge impact on the patient, but also your nursing time and nursing cost. It's cited as one of the five key elements in the S-Skin Bundle, adopted by the NHS for prevention of pressure ulcers. Not only this, but it can have a huge impact on the patient's mental health, resulting in depression, social isolation, and can cause them anxiety as well. It may only seem like a small task to care for the skin, but skincare is so important, so please don't forget it. Like we've just said, not only physically, but mentally as well. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer these quiz questions. What is the pH of the skin? Is traditional soap good for the skin? What could be a potential result of not providing good skincare? How often should the skin be cleansed? What can happen if the skin is not dried thoroughly? Think you know? What is the pH of the skin? The pH of the skin is between 4 and 6.5. Is traditional soap good for the skin? No. Traditional soaps can be too harsh. Try a milder cleanser or a soap with a pH of between 4 and 5. What could the potential result of not providing good skincare be? Poor skin condition and or incontinence can often be a contributing factor to pressure ulcer development. How often should the skin be cleansed? Daily for routine showering and bathing and as required for incontinent patients. What can happen when the skin is not dried thoroughly? Without sufficient drying of the skin, there is a risk of overhydration and maceration. Well done, we're now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you learn and apply it into your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some of the patients in your care and reflect on their skin care and how you might manage it moving forward. If you are on the NMC register, 
then please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts with a front sheet where you simply fill in your details and a back sheet, which allows for deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you'll be able to, to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you for your time today and please remember to look at other sections of the Smith and Nephew channel to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.